Welcome back to the Literary Bar. This is the second part of the interview with His Royal Majesty. I have with me His Royal Majesty, King Bubarayi Dakolo Agada IV, the chairman by Elsa State Traditional Rulers Council. He is Ibn Anawe, the paramount traditional head of the Ijaz of Ikpetiama Kingdom in Bielsa State. Before we went on a break, the king was just telling us uh, how he got into the NDA. And now we're just going to talk to him about his life as a cadet in the NDA 38 regular course. So, Your Majesty, how was it? As a it's a whole long story. Yes. You know, you, uh, for the book is here. I mean, yes. <laughs> the book is here. Please make sure you get a copy of this book. It's about um, 300 and something. Yes, uh, 300, but it's worth every page. It's like you're mm. watching a movie. I think this should be made into a movie. This, you know, all you movie producers, this is a book for you. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I, we reported at the NDA, I think on the 21st of uh, September. 2006. It was 2006, no, 19, 1986. 1986. 86, yes. 1986. You know, September uh, 21st. In fact, we just uh, did 38 years, you yes. know, from that date. And uh, we met, uh, met my colleagues, you know, at the quarter guard. I think I remember General Odon, you know, in particular. I was muscular, you know, that then. Slim, lean, slim, trim. Uh, muscular young man mm -hmm. and so I met about uh, 199 others and uh, we were baptized you know yes. from the gate you know mm -hmm. we had to hunch with our luggage to the uh, battalion lines that's what they call our hostels and there were people who were there ready to devour us and uh, <laughs> we were devoured and uh, life the routine was that way you have to run every day you have yeah. to even run while you are uh, yes in your, in sleeping your yeah. yes you know, and all of that yes and uh, the 37 calls uh, um, cadets where it was their job to make sure that we were uh, dealt with in the right way yes. that was like the baptism that will make you the general make you the combatant that you desire mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. And of course, they will mock us all the time that uh, this is the academy of your dream, you know, <laughs> that uh, you were wishing to be an officer, yes. but this is the, uh, the life, you know. Mm -hmm. So all of that happened. So we start on our heads, we crossed Bomber Tunnel, we were drenched, you know, in the hammer turn. We ran every day, we did the observable course, we did the shooting at the range, and everything was done. But there's a particular skill you mentioned that everybody who goes through this training, and that is being able to clean the, the bathrooms. Of course, yes, we are, we are very skilled toilet washers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Every general you see today, <laughs> from the CDL down to the, uh, the you know, every officer uh, is taught how to do that. So wow. as a matter of fact, if you want, you can, one could run, uh, a, a toilet cleaning <laughs> business <laughs> very successfully. <laughs> so beyond, behind the, uh, what makes the officer behind the shine mm -hmm. is uh, someone who has been groomed in a lot of facets of life, you know, yeah. including toilet washing <laughs> and uh, other, how to survive, how yes. to thin out of uh, an environment, how not to be a prisoner of war, for instance, you mm -hmm. know, yes, how to endure, you know, hardship, how to uh, survive without water and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I remember once we went to the bush for an exercise, and uh, normally we are fed in the bush. But sometimes, uh, if there is delay in the food, they will just say the enemy has captured your food. <laughs> so you have to survive, you know, without food. Some people would have wanted to escape. Life would have been a bit too hard. Oh, a lot of persons ran away. Oh. A lot of persons run away. I mean, it is a normal thing. People leave every year. As a matter of fact, the intakes, if you are taking cadets uh, every year, they put a few in the reserve, you know, giving room for those who will want oh. to run away. Yeah. Yes. There was a, 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 um, a gentleman who tried to escape. He tried so hard that he did not know that they were setting a trap yes, for him. Yes, the triple A guy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who, who tried as much as possible to escape, but each time he couldn't escape. Mm -hmm. And then the final day when he climbed up to try to escape, he was caught by the 37 <laughs> course guys. They brought him down and taught him a lesson of his life. 
remained? He, he remained and retired yeah. as a general, you know. Yes. Okay. okay. So that's the story. But I think there's this particular one that is uh, f quite funny. So we went to the bush, and uh, a young, uh, <laughs> young cadet felt uh, he was not going to uh, pitch a tent. He spoke out loud mm -hmm. that he was going to just sleep on this tree. This tree looks good. <laughs> And he didn't know the officer. An officer was there. Mm -hmm. He heard him, one uh, Captain e. Young at the yes, time. Yeah. He didn't say anything. And then by about 9 or 10 p.m., the officer came back to that tree with a torchlight. Mm -hmm. And there was the cadet. <laughs> and so he plucked him down. <laughs> <laughs> so As uh, cadet with Dofia and yes. taught him a lesson of his life. Yeah. And so we all learned that, in fact, even if you are planning, you shouldn't uh, let that. it out. Yes, yes you have so to just, you know, exactly. Yes. So al along the way, something happened, and you'd say looking back, maybe that is even the main reason that you were a cadet, mm -hmm. when you had to save the lives of oh, your, colleagues. Your, your, your colleagues. Yes. yes, unfortunately, a few passed away, but yes. something happened. Yes, that was um, an unusual event. Okay. And some of us say that if you have to be a soldier, even before you become a cadet, you should uh, be a swimmer, you know. Yes, because if you want to work in some oil companies, mm -hmm. they make sure you are a swimmer. If you are not a swimmer, you fail. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because you are going to go through all kinds of conditions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a young man that is desirous of becoming a cadet uh, will not want to learn how to swim in one month before he comes to write the exams. Can you learn how to swim in a month? Why not? In fact, even in uh, less than a week, you can, you know. Yes, it's that easy. And we're going to ask any <laughs> job person, you know. Anyway, so on this particular date, we had been primed for what they call point to point. We we're preparing for uh, what they call uh, camp initial, you know, the initial major camp. Uh, you take about a year to prepare for it from the first day you get to the academy. So this particular period, we had done what is called uh, the, the seniors. Our seniors had prepared the point to point. So points that you will use your compass mm -hmm. to identify, you know, in the evening into the night. And then normally we have two teams. So bomber battalion was my battalion. And uh, so we had uh, about 50 persons, a little less, you know. So let's say 25, 25 on each side. So I was on this side. And so the reverse cadets, there were two of us, um, um, uh, Rear Admiral, no, Rear Admiral Dapper retired, and then myself, we were both cadets at the time. So Dapper was in the other team, the other group, I was in this other one, you know. So 25 of us went. Uh, as we started, it didn't take long, it started raining, and then we went on and on. By the time we got to a particular point, uh, the place was flooded, and so we were marching, you know. And one of our seniors said, my friends, you guys should charge, you know. And then so we started running into, through the water, you know. And then uh, before we knew it, people started drowning. So it's like you go through an area that maybe is just about a foot to a meter deep. And then suddenly you get into a cliff, kind of. So you just go in, you know. And then people started drowning. Oh my God. So here was I. Uh, there was one other boy who could swim a bit from Benue State, and then I was now the fish there. So I had to start bringing them out. So I started bringing, I brought out like nine of them, you know. Those behind me had to stop, you know. So I brought out about nine of them. Uh, I still remember Cadet uh, Barao, he died actually, but he was the last to drown completely. Yeah. So I brought him out. And then I uh, realized that um, one of Dafiogo, uh, Brigadier General Dafiogo retired, had drowned completely. So we brought this other one, then went for that one. And then we now did the head count, a normal military drill. So when we counted, one man, we were one man shot. So I went in again. This time I had to remove my packs, went in, and brought him, having been hooked by a thousand hooks, mm -hmm. fishing hooks were there in that. Uh, uh, pool, you know, so brought him out and tried to resuscitate him, and then uh, we couldn't do that. For Dafiogo, uh, he was resuscitated, his, uh, the water came out of his belly, and uh, we took them to the hospital. But uh, very unfortunate, Kedet uh, Barao, it was close to Salah, and he said, Ah, that, uh, oh, he will not see Salah, he will not see Salah. And unfortunately, four days or so later, he died. Mm. 
But the Dafyogo, uh, we later called him Marine Officer, yes. he survived after like three, four months at 44. Mm -hmm. And he came out uh, looking so thin, but he survived. Today he's a retired uh, Brigadier General. Mm -hmm. uh, so Midele was the one that died uh, there and then. Mm -hmm. So when you look back, it's like, you know, because I didn't uh, get commissioned, yes. could, just, could this just have been you know, one of those major reasons why mm -hmm. I went there? So it depends on what school of thought you belong to, yeah. what you uphold. But for me, if I were not there on that day, mm -hmm. maybe yes. we'll have lost about a dozen of them. Yes. Most of them who are, you know, enjoying their life today. <laughs> But they've not brought cows to me yet. You know, <laughs> Please remember. <laughs> do, the, do the needful. They should do, do that. Do know. the needful. Yes. So this, to me, was a very good reason. If, even, if it's, um, if, even, even if nobody sees it that way, the fact that you were there and Nigeria was able to enjoy the services of these of this, of this, of this yes, officers. Yes, yes, yes. And this will take me straight to the meat of this. Uh, story why you were not commissioned in 1990 <laughs> something happened Perry boy is back in the picture yes a coup the Gideon Okaku yes against the Babangida administration yes and somehow that led to you not being commissioned not being commissioned yes now what I was saying to you uh, before I said if your brother was part of a coup mm. and you were the general, mm. would you not want, if a, a cadet's brother was indicted in a coup, mm. would you not want him out of the military? Would you not think that he's going to harbor resentment mm. and then hopefully seek vengeance mm. against the military that took, took his life? Mm. But it was your brother Okay, now let's look at it this way. First and foremost, has the cadet committed a crime? That is the first question. If he did not commit a crime, he's a Nigerian citizen. Because, you see, when things happen, it's like um, if you're a singer today, you sing. Some persons will be happy with your song, some will not. Mm -hmm. So once a coup happens, there are those who are happy. The people who are jubilating. So any of those people could have plotted another coup. So why just go and zero in on one young man who had left medical school, whose mother had lost five children, whose mother has lost a, a child, another child, and then also boot him out of the NDA? I don't see that as a smart way. As a matter of fact, you should deal with people based on their crimes, specific crimes. You don't just uh, use one. It's like, that's what they call uh, profiling. Yeah. You now say, okay, all the jaws are thieves because uh, they have pipelines in their, in their land. I mean, that is uh, stigmatization. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the way I see it. And uh, if, I, if it were in a different country, I would have become a multi-trillionaire by suing the hell out of all of those who played that <laughs> role. Of course, I don't think anybody should do that. Okay, we'll take a, we'll take a short break and we'll resume with this very um, serious conversation where um, our king wants his, his pound of flesh in billions. Of course. <laughs> That's a minimum. I, I Join mean. us after the break. Welcome back. I, I told you where you are in for a royal treat. This conversation is just getting more serious now. And the king in our midst is on a roll. Nigeria, he believes, is owing him for taking the life of his brother, who, even if you look at it, was really trying to fight for the masses. And, um, but the point is that you were caught in the crossfire yes. of that. Yes. Your dream was truncated of serving this same country, country that yes. your brother was trying so hard to, yes. to save. Yes, I remember that uh, people were not very happy with the administration at a point and um, but the thing is that are we are people ever really going to be happy with any administration but specifically to you i'm trying to understand why you will not understand why the military had to have issues with you but they didn't go i'll try to say leave 
something happened that led to a kangaroo court. Yeah, so it's the kangaroo thing that's yes. the issue here. Yes. Why would you use a kangaroo? Do you know how many persons were demoralized? The day I was leaving the NDA, the entire NDA was crying. Yes. 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 My cosmetics were crying, my juniors were crying, even those I used to uh, put you were crying. Yes. But um, there was, uh, no, I want, I, this one I have to, I want you to uh, elaborate <laughs> on it. In the kangaroo court, what yes. led to you was a junior officer tried to get smart yes, with you yes. and you. But I, I will point out that he's a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> His majesty is a boxer. Mm. You dealt with somebody who was trying to be, who was rude to you. Yes. And they turned it into something else that even people had to come and say was it a knuckle fight or did you use <laughs> something <laughs> knife okay. blow. <laughs> a knuckle knife blow or yes, whatever. Knife, yes. Yes. so there was this cadet they called uh, Olu Laimo. yes and he he was I was staying very close to God I was at the tallest building mm -hmm. in India at the time call it Abuja so I was up there and this guy was making noise downstairs mm -hmm. And I sent a word to them that they should stop making noise, more so after lights out. Mm -hmm. But they went on. I felt, uh, I mean, he was a big man now, you know, so uh, I was not going to be able to do anything. Whatever plans they had, I don't know. But so I and I eventually came downstairs to want to exercise my authority as mm -hmm. uh, a senior cadet mm -hmm. at the time. So by, when I got downstairs, I saw him leaving now. He was leaving the scene of crime. Mm -hmm. And so I called him back. He refused to come. So I followed him, and he continued going. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere, you know, between the Abuja block and the, oh, and the old Boma block, mm -hmm. he turned around and used the stick in his hands mm -hmm. to strike me. It's a good thing I'm wearing a short sleeve today. Mm -hmm. You can see this mark? Yes, good. Yes, this yes. mark is yeah. the, is the yeah. mark. Oh, yes. Wow. yes, from that whip. So he, I blocked it, and then the wood, wooden pole broke into two. And then he uh, uh, struck me again, and then it broke again into two. And I was a boxer, bomber, boxer, bomber, trainer. You know, so I was the one training this cadet. So I gave him one here, <laughs> you know, and he fell down flat and died. His soul was escaping. Wow. Yes. But here was a senior cadet, you know, 40 years senior cadet. Uh, oh, 50 years, I think yes. so, yes. Yes, you had graduated yeah, chemistry now. Yeah, so 50 years, uh, cadet. And, uh, well, I had to pick him up. So took him to the nearby tap and started drenching him. I was not to get um, troubled. So I drenched him for a while, and then he came back to life. And then I handed him over to the, uh, they call him CSU at the time, uh, he retired uh, Brigadier General Abdul Salam. Mm -hmm was a duty CSO at the time. So I handed him over to him. And he took him upstairs and then kept drilling him for the rest of the night with other lawbreakers, you know. But uh, I think down the line that evening, that night, around 3 a.m., I was invited by the duty RSM, you know. Apparently, this young man had lied to say that uh, he was still bleeding around that, uh, the bridge of the nose, that uh, I used a knife to um, to chisel him, you know, or to cut him. Uh, it was a preposterous story. So um, Kedoji Yofuga came to me. Uh, he was the BSO at the time. And then I went to the new, the uh, main lines. And then the RSM asked me my story. So I told him quickly the story. And he now went back to the young man who was uh, lying to ask him, uh, he told him that, look, see, there are um, different injections for different injuries. <laughs> yes, and he was yes. going to take him to yes. the MRS from mm -hmm. that point. So she'll tell him in certain terms whether it was a knife injury mm -hmm. or, you know, that there's an injection for knife cut, <laughs> injection yes, for bullet wound, injection for snake bite, mm -hmm. injection for normal injury. Mm -hmm. 
and that if he says whatever injured him, as he takes him to MRS, he will just demand that they inject him according to his claim. <laughs> and he said, uh, to be frank, that uh, it was a blow, you know. <laughs> and I'm the sure man warned him, him. He said, look, why will a young man like you be willing to be this wicked at this age of yours, to want to cause the, um, what is the word, withdrawal yes. of a, cadet, a fellow cadet, that it is mm -hmm. not good. And you should know that withdrawal of a cadet is not the end of the cadet's life. Yes. That he had been in that NDA for so long, he had seen when uh, young, some cadets were withdrawn, mm -hmm. and less than one year later, there were pilots flying yes. civil planes, and they fly past the NDA, and then their cosmates will come out to look at them, and so on and so forth. So it is just a phase. Try and be good. Don't try to be extra wicked. You are too young for that. But that didn't stop there. I think uh, about two or so days later, this guy's head had swallowed. It was like five times you know, the size of his former head. And I remember one, another RSM, now the drill RSM, a, a J2 Mobi, invited me to ask me what, what happened. I told him what happened. He said, uh, how can you say that? Well, this one will be like saying a caterpillar jammer. <laughs> You small, but this other carrot was bigger. That if it was uh, carrot, the Nindu who was the biggest carrot at the time, he would have understood. But not me. Look at me, looking like a string. You know, wiry guy. And then here was a bigger guy. But it didn't stop there. From there, I was tried in my but in my battalion, and uh, he was still trying to lie at that time again. He said that it was um, a knife. You know. But, but do you think that maybe it was a setup to eventually get rid of you? No, it wasn't. It was okay, it a normal a thing that okay. was happening, but the system came into it. Okay. Yes, the system got a wind of it. You know, people uh, told some people that the coup plotter's brother was there in the NDA. Because yeah. <laughs> at that time, it had been known that my brother was part of the coup, you know. So, uh, they, w they wanted to get even with me, so to speak. And then, so when these other guys heard that the Kere's brother, I mean, a uh, coup plotter's brother was in the NDA, I uh, mean, the, the center could not hold anymore. Yes, so, so that was what happened. So, but he also procured a false witness called uh, Ogunshuba, yes. And uh, all through the trial, uh, the false witness was there trying to be a false witness. They never even gave him an opportunity to tell mm -hmm. his lies, you know. Yeah, I think at the end of it, um, the commandant came and said, are you Captain Perebo Dakolo's brother? Yes, that was, uh, that was General yeah. Garba Duba. Yes. Yes. yes, and in your mind, you said like an enthusiastic bride during the moment of her yes. marital vows, without any form of hesitation, I said, yes, yes. I am his younger brother, yes. sir. And then he scribbled a few things down in a book while I looked down at him from my standing position right in front of his desk, you do not have the qualities required of an officer in the Army, Air Force, or Navy. Yeah. With the loudest parade commander's voice I could muster, I said, not true in my mind. I further said in my mind, you big biased liar, you are no, you are no more, you are more unfit to remain my a commandant. commandant. Yes. Was it at this point you made up your mind that it wasn't worth all the drama? Uh, I had no choice. I had been withdrawn. <laughs> so I had no other choice. Uh, so I had to leave. You couldn't petition? Petition who? There was no one to petition. You petitioned God. And mm -hmm. so I had to pick up my life. But I, I think that, you know, I am not to discuss that. It is mm -hmm. more for those, particularly 39th cause and others, and maybe my cause mates, to see what the Nigerian military lost by not having me as an officer, okay. as a commissioned officer, yes. A, yes, yes. So it is they that will count the loss, and I can tell you that uh, it is unquantifiable. <laughs> of course, for someone to have left military school <laughs> yes. to come to NDA meant yes. that uh, you, he meant you, business. Yes. He um, was ready. But again, going back to when your brother participated in the 1985 coup, Yes. Was he on Babangida's side? Of course. Was on Babangida's side. Was the one, they were the ones that brought Babangida on board. Yes. So, so you can imagine Babangida's uh, ambition. Yes. And then seeing that this same people who brought him in mm. want to take him out. Mm. At a point in the book, you mentioned that you had to go and take your brother's 
pregnant wife yes away yes are we to understand that you knew something about this school yes and if you did why did you not as someone who has pledged to serve the nigerian government mm. the Ni nigeria as a country mm. stop your brother mm. or alert someone well i am not saying i knew mm -hmm. all of it i was a cadet i was um guided more or less by my brother mm -hmm. to help take his wife mm -hmm. to safety there were going to be some riots mm -hmm. in the country that was the story and so i did that but um you know telling the story 20 years after 30 years after 40 years after it's a different ball game mm -hmm. someone just acted uh like a beast okay and uh, someone told me that uh, similar things had happened. My uh, battalion uh, co commander or company commander at the time told me that uh, after Dimka school, everybody answering Dimka was uh, exercised from mm -hmm. the uh, Nigerian uh, uh, military, so particularly you, so you the got NDA. Off locking. Hmm? You got off locking. No, not killed though. They were oh. removed. Okay. And they were also withdrawn just like me. Mm -hmm. um, what was his name? Um, the Idiagbon son, you know, and mm -hmm. all of that. So, I mean, it's a barbaric practice, mm -hmm. okay? Judge people from their own crime, okay? Not from their brother's crime. Nigerians took sides, okay? And you don't go and just kill everybody. You understand? You don't go and kill everybody like, okay, Boko Haram. Say Boko Haram is taking place in the Northeast. You go and kill the whole Northeast. Because you say you feel they are all sympathizers. You have to identify the real sympathizers. So if there is one, you have evidence, then you deal with them accordingly. You don't just come and, uh, you know, uh, deal with everybody and all of that. And more so, particular, uh, maybe even removing those that will have done the better job. But note that uh, Babangida was the first one to take the IMF loan. And since then, Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria's uh, economy has been nose diving. So, uh, do we keep clapping for him? No, 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 no. So, you <laughs> can see why someone like Babangida would not have wanted you near because you do not like... Yes, yeah, so that, that's what I'm saying. So, someone like Babangida not wanting me near is not a problem. Today, at least, I'm telling the story and I'm saying that what Garba Duba did was not professional. Okay? It is not something they should clap for. Yes, yeah, so today is my story. At least I'm alive to tell the story. So I'm telling my own side of the story. And Babangida is alive somewhere. Yeah, of course, so if he hears it, he should know that uh, <laughs> he's part of what has, uh, is making Nigeria what it is today. Mm -hmm. I'm not applauding him. Uh, yes. We do not, we do not expect you to... Uh, why should I? No, 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 no. I am, the ministry is a very good institution. Yes. But there are certain characters who keep appearing and doing nonsense out of it. And so it is not the institution. It is those characters mm -hmm. that are the issue. So we must look at them. We must separate the institution from any character that is messing around or messing up. There are still brilliant, excellent, you know, uh, Nigerians that are in the military. Yes, yes. That will keep uh, doing uh, their job properly. Yeah, having said that, the camaraderie between you and the 38 regular course mm. is still there. Everything you're doing, they're there. You know, of course, your, of course. That is what it is. That is what it is. So, so you can imagine you now getting me out, you know, just because you want to preserve your own life. You are not thinking about the nation. It is about the nation, not about an individual. Okay? So, in fact, you've helped my point now. They did it looking at it from their personal benefit, not as a nation. You don't, you don't ground uh, a, a, an expert pilot because of your girlfriend. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the king is speaking. So, <laughs> what do I say after that? But anyways, um, so you left the NDA. Yes. You had your degree from chemistry. The yeah, you have your your degree in chemistry. Chemistry, yes. And in some ways, you benefited from, you know, academically, mm. and then your life. Today um, is better off for your military training. Yes, my military training was excellent, very good. Um, it has led me all through my life. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to look at academics, uh, you can't trade uh, the medical profession for uh, a degree in chemistry. Mm -hmm. Also, when I'd gotten up to the third year and all of that, you know, going to fourth year. 
so, but the military, yes, is, uh, I describe it as a software that once you download, mm -hmm. you cannot uh, remove from your system. It remains in your system all through. So uh, now you're moving to civilian life. Okay, yeah. Because after the NDA, you become a teacher mm, yes. at UDSS. A businessman, a teacher it, at UDSS. Yes, okay. Yeah, because all through you've been a businessman. At the, yes. Even while you were in Uniports, you were yes, a exactly. businessman. So I think that just runs in your veins, Thank business. You. Thank you. But um, career-wise, you chose to teach chemistry yes. at UDSS. Yes. And your students love you. I mean, oh, the testimonials yes, yes, from yes, them yes, yes. is still there. And how you actually supported your students, especially yes. the indigent ones. Yes. Beyond money, you were there as a role model. You were there as a mentor yes. for your student. And I still think that some of your military background and the training you got from your mother all came together to help you, you know, uh, work. But you're an activist yes. because... Even as a teacher, hmm. you still had issues with the school authorities yes. and the way they were uh, yes. dealing with all exactly. the teachers. Yes. T tell, us, tell us about that. Yes, I'm someone who will not want to see someone being oppressed. You know, I want to look at the facts of it, and uh, particularly for the weaker ones. You know, that's where I got my muscles trained as well. So I will always want to uh, be fair to all parties. And so the activist in me uh, is usually deployed once I see injustice. And uh, it paints me uh, as an individual with the type, of, um, um, the type of resources we have, for instance, as Africans, to still be uh, living in poverty, for instance, uh, because we're not seeing that small trick that the global con game is uh, meted out, meting out on us. So my activism comes out. So in UDSS, uh, some persons were trying to um, oppress everybody. I'm like, I mean, what brains do they have anyway? Mm -hmm. So I was ready to ensure that uh, we um, had a, an appropriate face-off. But unfortunately, my colleagues were not as dogged as mm -hmm. I should be. I've also, I think there are a couple of accounts where some students had to attack uh, yes. a teacher and all mm -hmm. of that and um, some students threatened to come in with pistols and all of that. And in all of those cases, I jumped in and took control, in fact, including calling police for some, some, some students, you know, uh, because the principal was not ready to do the needful. He was afraid of uh, his promotion because mm -hmm. some of those children were children of professors and all of that. So I do that. And of course, after... Yeah, so in UDSS, that's what I was. And then uh, I was also the disciplinary yes. uh, teacher, you yeah. know. So I did that very frontally as well. And uh, in spite of how strict I was, mm -hmm. the children uh, benefited a lot. I can yeah. tell you proudly today that uh, my, my former students are everywhere in the world, from Australia yes, to yes. New Zealand to America to Nigeria, beauty queens and all, yeah. uh, Nollywood actresses and actors and business mm -hmm. tycoons and politicians. Yes. You know, yeah. so every time if you walk about with me, you just be embarrassed one day. Someone <laughs> will dive me at the airport. Oh, Uncle Dakolo, and all of that. We must know. mention at this point that your nephew Timmy Dakolo yes. is uh, someone that we're all proud of for yes. his talent. Yes. Yes. But going back to your activism, your activism led you to a relationship that has um, that's so personal, rewarding, and also very, very uh, that opened you up to other things. Your relationship with Oronto Douglas. Yes. Somebody introduced you yes, to him yes. because of your stance, your integrity, yes. and the belief that he had similar qualities and a friendship yes. uh, between two of you would do great things. Yes. How, Actually, how about 1995 or thereabouts, yes. when um, um, Adaka, Inema Adaka, who was um, <clears throat> running the program with me, a uh, chemical engineering program with me at Uniport. Yeah. Uh, we interacted a while and he said, no, 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 no. He was Oronto's uh, former schoolmate at UST. So he knew Oronto well. I didn't know Oronto at all, you know. I was coming from the military and all of that. And he said I needed to, we needed, he needed to introduce us. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a good day, he had us introduced. And from that moment, we became uh, like um, five and six, you know. And we did a lot of things together and lived together. And we still, I still till this day, 
look forward to a Nigeria where nobody will uh, go to bed on an empty stomach because it's very, very possible. That's, that's, yes. that's a tough call. No, it's not a tough call. It's, it's doable. UNICEF just told us that Nigeria has the highest amount of malnourished children. I know. Some, some, I know. some data. I know. But Orunta Douglas is a man of integrity, as yes. we've come to find out. God rest his soul. He worked for Lamia Yes. And at a point where Lamia Sia got into trouble with yes. um, corruption, mm. embezzlement, and all that, you, you offered an apologia for Lamia Sia because mm. you're like, why is his own difference? Is mm. it because he's from yes. Bielsa State? Exactly. After all, it is you people's exactly, money. Exactly. That's similar to what the Delta people did for Ibori. But does it make it right? Okay, okay let's, let's look at it this way. Let's look at Alemisea. I'm not talking about Ibori now. Yes. So Alemisea, you know, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. We came into Alemisea's government not because he was our best of friends, but uh, he was our governor. And uh, the previous four years, so to speak, um, could have been better. So we were like, let's come in and help out, you know. And Alamisea's request to Runto was to come in and help out. So Runto also reached out to some of us to join him to help out. So we are there to help out. And then a lot of plots, all these, they were plots, okay. I don't know if there is anybody uh, out there who has uh, held most of these uh, government positions that have not helped themselves. Okay. Yes. Does it make it right. You know, it doesn't make it right. But why will the thief be prosecuting a thief? Because for instance, was caught. you know the eleven commandments. That shall not be caught. No, 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 no. You see, so now for me, Nigeria has had over three trillion dollars from oil. Okay, stolen about one trillion completely. It didn't come back to Nigeria. The other two trillion that came, you know, the, those are the ones that the cows swallow and the fishes swallow and uh, the rats swallow and so on and so forth. Yes. yes, that's what has been going on. So someone wanted, it was a vendetta, let us deal with this man because he is outspoken. Okay, so all those plots were there just to deal with him. He was not different from any other person uh, that was prosecuting him. Okay. So for us, uh, particularly the Orontos uh, team, find him guilty first. You can't say he has stolen just by suspicion. That was the argument. Okay? Take him to a court, treat him as a Nigerian citizen, a governor that had all the immunity. They violated everything and nobody saying anything. They violated everything. He had immunity as a governor. So why will anybody go and handcuff him? So obviously it's because he was an German, And I have to say it. Yes, it was because he was an German. Mm -hmm. So you steal the jaw oil, you nationalize it, make it available for everyone, you fly the jets, you, you enjoy the yachts, okay? And then you treat him like a cow, like a common criminal, when he has not been found guilty. Where is it done? It's only in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So that is the standpoint. So Ronto's position, which was my position, is that until he's found guilty, mm -hmm. given the privileges he has, as a matter of fact, he was not supposed to have been arrested or prosecuted until he had served out his tenure as a governor. That is immunity. Mm -hmm. So why would anyone wonder why I would take such a stand? Mm -hmm. A Nigerian governor was handcuffed by a, a corrupt government. Today, have we not seen that government as corrupt? Mm -hmm. So it's not a joke thing. Um, Alame Seher yeah. was eventually found guilty, right? Yes. And eventually pardoned. Yes. So he was absolved of everything. Wow. So from beginning, we were right. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations to <laughs> Thank the you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. To the John Nation. <laughs> Thank you so much. But um, after that, you still... Served Nigeria with uh, Samamadi in yes, um, Nepal, and you, you you have some ideas on how Nigeria should improve yes. on, on on electricity. I'm a patriotic can, Nigerian. <laughs> I, I I can see I can feel your passion, Your Majesty. I can I can feel your passion. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So from how you served with Samamadi for um, NERC? Yes, NERC, yes, Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission. 
now we've had uh, power stations um, collapse three times yes. in, in one week. Mm. What's happening? Corruption. Again. It's been corruption. Didn't you hear about 16, 16 billion dollars or so that was invested during uh, Bassanjo's government uh, for electricity and everything disappeared? It's been corruption. Because Nigeria needs super greed. I'm happy that recently, I think, uh, the, it's been liberalized so states can create their own power. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is not rocket science, okay? It's not rocket science. If you don't have the infrastructure, it will collapse. Amazing. Well, uh, if you want to know more about that, please pick up the book. I want to go straight. Uh, where I've, I've not read any portion of that. No, no, you, you will. You will. Um, now I want to come to you your life now as his royal majesty because yes. all this while that you had so, not yeah. been elected mm -hmm. as king in 2016 yes you became the ibinanoe yes. of ikmitiama kingdom yes kingdom. kingdom kingdom yes in ejo mm -hmm. how did that come up come about and how is your life as a king with your beautiful queen by your side yes. of course so now, the, in the Ekpetiyama, um, in recent times, um, if you qualify, so if you are from the royal lineage, mm -hmm. lineage in the Ekpetiyama communities, mm -hmm. you are eligible to put up yourself for uh, the people to pick. Uh, so we had a previous king in 1956. 1956. Yes, yes. Um, His Royal Majesty King Ezekiel Okoya, and uh, he was a federal big wig, you know, mm -hmm. different uh, levels. Uh, he had just one wife and nine children. A fairly honest man, you know, and uh, he's from Bumadi Gabriel Okara's community by the River Non. All this why you mentioned this, the River oh, Non. My so God, the River <laughs> Non is where Putyama Kingdom yes. is, mm -hmm. and so he joined uh, the, his ancestors in 2012. And the Equitable Kingdom resolved that we should uh, write something down. So we wrote a constitution. I was in England at the time. Yes, uh, yes to do the yes. anti-terrorism yes, course. Yes, yes. Terrorism, international crime, terrorism and global in, security. Yes, the irony of that is that you were now mugged in the UK twice. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I, 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 I was able to handle yes, them. Yes, yes. So, um, so, in, uh, so the constitution was written, I returned I think in 2015, and in 2016 there was a demand for a king. And I looked through, I looked at the kingdom and, and felt who can actually really be my king anyway. I think I could just be the king, you know, so I was up there with, uh, along with... Um, Your dad was a chief? Yes, my father was a chief. So um, my cousin uh, put up himself as well, and myself. Okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, we'll just take a short break. Okay. And we'll come back. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are welcome. But we have been having this amazing conversation with the king of Ibitiama kingdom. Yes. Yes, the, the Ibinano Royalty, way. Yes. yes, the Ibinano way. And so it's, it's a royal treat. I don't even have words for it. But his promise is going to come back because he's an author of five books and counting. So His Majesty was just going to tell us about his life as a king. Yes. And he's going to give us a special reading from his book. Yes. So, um, so, on the, so the processes of having to reach out to um, the... My, the subjects, the Ekpetiama people, was carried out. I had been part of a process that led to the employment of um, a lot of people in the Ekpetiama kingdom, and I've uh, been particularly interested in what goes on there. But I think some persons didn't quite know. They felt I was an alien. I was like wondering. You know, so at the end of the day, the people felt I was going to be a better king for them than the other three equally qualified people. So I became king and got coronated. And then, of course, the work uh, started with Her Majesty the Queen, uh, the Igrigi one of the universe. Yes. You know? So life as a king has been a little restraining, a little, yes, restricting. 
uh, because I mean, <laughs> a few days ago I saw my friend, a billionaire, and he was wearing a t-shirt and sandals, and uh, you know, with the same flight, nobody will ever suspect that that is the kind of person. Okay, you must dress like this every time in public. Of course, I mean, you don't see me in t-shirt. You shouldn't, you know. Yes, I have to be kingly all the time. Yes. Okay. Right, this one is not even the full regalia. This is like... When next you're here, you know, <laughs> do us the, you know? the, the honors yes. of, of being there. No, so as a king, you also lead your people. You are making sure that uh, they are getting the best, you know, in every angle. Okay? So if it were uh, during the days of war, you are the warlord, you know, mm -hmm. for your people. And that bit we are doing. So from 2016 to now 2024, would you yes, say, yes. or will your people say that they are better because you were their king? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Yes, yes uh, they will say so. And it's not just my people in the Petyama alone. I am today one chairman of Biosocial State Tradition Rulers Council, which means I'm uh, the head of all the Tradition Rulers in Biosocial State. I am also chairman of conference of Ijo tradition rulers and elders. So I am also placed there in the entire Ijo nation. Mm -hmm. So what you are seeing today is the face of an Ijo man. A proud. The heart and mind of an Ijo man. That's what you're seeing. Yes. Yes. So my people are quite happy. Yes. that I am king. And now you're going to make all of us happy by reading an excerpt. Yes, from so the... I'm reading from page 302, and this is, uh, so I, I read. Yes. My dear friend Daka of the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital, and I boarded a fast-flying boat from Creek Road, Waterside. We made our way to Ogbia Town on a four-hour-long, seemingly endless boat ride. It had it has remained an unforgettable boat cruise for Dr. Daka and me. We maneuvered through creeks, rivers, and rivulets, crisscrossing seas bordered by lush green mangrove trees for most of that long journey. We got to see my dear old mother, who had unflinchingly supported the idea of three of her children serving the Nigerian state as military combatants. I was honest when I explained the implications of what was happening in the country. It was bad, I said, but I also tried to reassure her, told her to hope for the best and remain strong. She was calm, but it was as if her eyes were saying, Oh, my enemies have found another of my innocent babies. If that was the case, she was entitled to her sincere opinion as a mother who had earlier lost five of her children. Back again on the flying boat, the not so dark Daka and the much darker Dakulu zoomed off, heading for Port Harcourt through the same lush, beautiful scenery, which became even more so with the golden glow of the evening sun. The skyline accented by the seagulls and forest birds. The trees populated by swinging green monkeys trying to make it to their abodes as we were frantically trying to make it to ours too. The fresh water vapor laden breeze blowing through my brain literally oxygenated my mind as I calculated the odds of what was to come with absolute clarity. We got back to Port Harcourt in the early hours of twilight on that Sunday. I saw my brother's pregnant wife and her host, who himself was confused as to the state of affairs, and told them that I was going back to Kaduna the next day. He wondered if I would be safe, and I affirmed that it was my best bet. It was a life or death risk I took as an of circuit to prevent my brother's younger young pregnant wife from possible extreme abuse which could have led to the death of both fetus and mother i knew that nine out of ten persons will not have had the courage to return to nda at that stage but i was glad to be numbered in that rare 10 percentile this was wow. after the 1990 coup yes you read so beautifully, Your Majesty. Thank you so much. And we are so glad that you were amongst that rare 
10 percentile. percentile. Thank you. And we are happy for your stay in the NDA. We are also happy for your activism. And we are happy even on behalf of your people that they got you as their king. And we hope that we will continue to see you to enjoy your very gifted literary mind. Thank you so Thank much you. for being with us here at the, literary, so much, the literary Bar. Thank you I'm too. most appreciative of your time and your presence. And to you watching, thank you for your time, knowing that your other means a lot. Until I come your way next time. For more, please follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can watch us on DSTV channel 408 and on YouTube. Make your life a great story. My name is Chinidu. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you and bye. <laughs>